I've never thought of you as like, like just like watching YouTube videos, just, you know, I'm getting ready to talk to you today. Like, it, it was like, I was like, wait, like blood stuff? Like <laughs> yeah. gang shit? Like, oh, I, yeah. I just never thought of you that way, you know? Like, oh, yeah. Uh, I was running wild before we were making records. Um, I was, you know, I guess I was considered a badass kid. Uh -huh. You know, I was I was very uh, to myself. But when I got involved with the gangs, I was pretty much a soldier, you know, and uh, with with within a gang, you have your own gang, you know. So let's just say there's 200 of us and we're from the same block and we claim this block. This is our gang. Right. Not all of us hang out. Not all of us get along the same way. But there might be five or six of us within that 200 that are our own circle and that we hang tough and shit like that and you know we always stood within our circle i mean we we were a part of everyone else too but we were the tightest over here and for a time yeah man i i ran in in this one circle within our set as we call it yeah um and we were running fucking wild i mean um i got the name be real through you know the gangbang life um, because before that, I, you know, Sen and I, we've known each other before that. I mean, Sen sort of introduced me to the bangers that I eventually got down with. But I knew Sen Dog way before that because hip hop was always a, a thing for us. Like it was a hobby that we all or, or something that we loved. It wasn't even a hobby yet. We started rapping and shit for fun and, and it did become a hobby. But I sort of strayed away and got into the gangs and, and Sen Dog and his brother Mellow Man Ace and DJ Muggs, they took it serious. They took the music serious. They were constantly trying to push to that. I was out there fucking, you know, running really wild. I got shot, everything. And uh You got shot? Oh yeah. In the lungs. Well, yeah, it so we were um there was like maybe five or six of us. We were in another neighborhood, another blood neighborhood, but their neighborhood is constantly at war with these guys that are their rivals with their practically neighbor neighbors so walking through their hood if you don't know their get down you might get caught up and that's what happened you know we didn't know how heated their little war was in in their own neighborhood we were oddly enough going from one house to grab some weed to come back and party at the house we had just left from but we didn't take it we didn't take a strap with us meaning a gun and uh, a car pulls up in front of us. They're all wearing blue hats. We're wearing red and shit. And so, as you can imagine, all the shit talking starts. And none of us are pulling anything out. And, I, uh, you know, I noticed that really quickly. <laughs> and I saw the fucking gun coming over the front seat. And then the fucking driver, the, the, the passenger had it. And he starts letting off on us. He hits one of my guys in the elbow. Uh, the bullet travels from the elbow and comes out and gets stuck here mm. they thought they killed him because of the way he the way he reacted when he got hit so they switched the gun and they're they're trying to get me now they take four shot or he takes four shots on me the fourth one ricochets off the wall i run into it oh. so i could hear him tock, 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 and then the fourth one catches up to me boom and i, and I caught it right here on the side in the back and I didn't feel my lung collapse yet. It was when I hit the corner and I looked to see if they'd gotten out of the car to chase, chase us down with it. But they hadn't. They kept, you know, they shot. They kept going. And that's when I collapsed because my lung had, had been pierced. They, I got hit with a 22 hollow point. Still in me. Like there's a fragment wow. here, a fragment here, and a fragment back there. So, yeah, that was, uh, that, that happened on Imperial in Hoover. Wow, wow. Didn't, and did you know like, you got hit? Oh, I knew it was. A, yeah, it felt like a Charlie horse. When when did that happen? That was in 1986. Oh, damn. Maybe that, 85, 85, 86. Crazy. I was 15, 16 years old. Wow. A lot of us at that age had gotten shot. I mean, a few of my friends at that age had just gotten out of um, uh, YA, which is, a, you know, like a prison. Truby. Yeah. It, well, it's a prison for, for youth that eventually are going to go to the the real prison like you know there's there's juvenile hall and that's like a county jail for the youth you know you're it, it's just basically 
you know, they're holding you till they figure out if you're going to YA or you're going to get probation or some shit like this, right? YA is the serious thing for the for the youngsters because okay. it's, it's like Ma- maximum. yes, because it's like a prison, because it's like Jeez. a prison. It's a junior prison, maximum basically. security juvenile. Yeah. yeah, so some of my guys, you know, that were my age and in, in my time that we were banging, they would get out from maybe the six months or the year that they had to do for whatever. And one of my one of my homies came out. He had a he had a big reputation as young as he was. He was known for being a shooter, and when he got out, they rode down the block, found him, and they killed him that day. He, I think he had Jeez. been out maybe a week, mm-hmm. if Man. that. Jeez. And that's that's how crazy it was. I mean, it it, it was a war zone, man. Got to tell you. Yeah, Ice Cube talks about going to YA and hit the hood swall. He yeah, well, that, that does happen. Yeah. He didn't do it, you know what I mean? Like, he was portraying things that he's seen in his life from friends we've both seen that you know what i mean i actually lived it for a while so you know i seen some of my homies come back like that they you know they go in skinny young kids and come back monsters <laughs> you know monsters ripped up 17 inch arms at 16 years old i'm like what the fuck because i never went to ya I, you know i was fortunate enough to you know be lucky to dodge and that was hard for me because, you know, I'm like a, a, a Spanish or a Latin or, you know, however they want to call it today, Latino, whatever, in, in a black gang. So I'm easy to point out. I'm easy to fucking yeah. track down if what for whatever I do. So, you know, whatever I did, I had to be very stealth like. And uh, I got lucky and didn't, you know, have to get on that run. But plenty of my boys they they had to go do that time in ya and some of them went from ya to prison like yeah. you know they graduated as we used to call it Jeez. i remember yeah. getting the sense like back in the day hanging out that there was like you know something of a of a gang element that was like in, oh, yeah. in, in your like in our circle in, you know like kind of circling around yeah you know like they wanted to, they wanted to be down they wanted to like hang out and, and uh you know, I remember. I remember a guy named Soldier. Yeah, Soldier. He's still. He's still around. Yeah. Yeah. And then there was my buddy Dreamer. I don't know. Dreamer. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, Dreamer is. A, is he? He's still around. I, I think so. Yeah. Dude, that's a uh, see. That's against the, thing. the odds, man. <laughs> and, and see, that's the thing. You know, when I got out of gang banging, people knew I did, and I never was one to like, overtly tell, people or show people like, oh, this is this and that gang yeah. uh and, and and as as we call it set tripping you know yeah. when you're going out of your way to let people know i never did that because for me i didn't want to mix that shit into the the music world because i knew it would be a short run for us because yeah. you know when you got enemies out there and now you're fucking flashing on them you're gonna have a short run you you got a big target on your back and you got to right. be constantly dodging that. So I let it all go. And I, I never had any problems with anybody that was banging on the other side after that. You know what I mean? We, I've always got along with any other artists that were actual gang bangers on the other side. Always cool. You know, yeah, no I disrespect. Never. But our crew that we roll with is comprised from people from different neighborhoods who, you know, we might, they might have been a crip, and now I'm a blood over here. Or this he might have been a, a Mexican gangbanger or whatever. We all roll together. That's that's the dynamic of our crew is that it's comprised of different right. folks from mm. different streets here in in California. So when you step to us, you're stepping to not just us. Right. And, and I think that's why no one ever really stepped to us like that. One, we never were with the chips on our shoulders like yeah right. come fuck with us and see what happens i think that's well put you I know think, uh, I we think... were always just chill right for sure was there a moment that you were like i gotta get out of this or did it just kind of trickle away in some way or like how does that work when i chose the music i knew that i could not bring the gang banging in so i just had a, a talk with my close circle of homies and said hey i'm gonna go do this go do it Nice. handle that shit nice and it was as simple as that it wasn't like i you know i had to make a speech to 200 motherfuckers and like <laughs> right. hey man um look they understood and they supported me and they had my back 
and a PowerPoint and, presentation. Yeah. Yeah. This is what I'm going to do in the next <laughs> my 10 business years. Plan. Yeah, yeah. And now check your slide three. We got, yeah. you know, and, and not for nothing. I mean, they, they knew I was trying to do something positive. And for me, I was indoctrinated in gangbang and I didn't, I wasn't trying to get out. I wasn't even trying to do the music anymore. Like mugs Sen and, and mellow came to me one day and says, Hey, um, Mello's got a record deal. We need you to help us write some shit. Come back and help us write. And I didn't even think I could at that point because I had been so invested in, in the streets at that point. Like, ah, what am I going to do? We ain't going to make no money doing that. Damn. <laughs> wow. And um, they're like, well, what do you got to lose? And I Man, thought, you know, like, <laughs> I, I, I want to be careful not to kiss your ass, but, but the, the way the fucking rap is... People, like the sound gets popular and everybody's just sounds the fucking right. same. It kind of drives me nuts. It happens now, today still. Yeah, oh, dude, Absolutely. Oh, more today than ever. More than ever, yeah. Yeah, more today than ever. And dude, I just love like how unique you've always been in, in, your, you. in your art, you know? Like, and dude, you're, to, 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 to hear you say that you doubted if you could write dope shit, it just, it <laughs> yeah. just confuses oh. me, man. Well, yeah, you know, because I hadn't written anything in a long time, and I did, most certainly didn't know how to write a song yet. I knew how to write raps. Like, I was good at writing. My delivery sucked. I wasn't that good. But they knew I could write, and they needed help writing. And so I came back, and I did two songs for Mello's first album. I think it was uh, River Cubanos and uh, Tacapella or some shit like this. And they were okay songs. If you listen to them now, you're like, oh, they're, they're all right. But what it did for me was it made me realize that I could still do it. I could still write. And it sort of, I got bitten by the bug. Like, fuck, the studio shit is kind of cool. Super cool. And, and, you know, at that time, he was working with Delicious Vinyl. So in and out of the studio would come Young MC or fucking Tone Loke. And they were cool with us. They, you know, they, they were always, always very cool with us. They knew I was a gangbanger. So maybe that was <laughs> part of it. You know, <laughs> yeah. Just be cool with this dude because yeah. we don't know. Um, tripping. Certain politeness but, comes with that. But, yeah. you know, I've I always maintained respect no matter what. Even if there were a crip or whatever, I never got out of pocket with anyone in the studio because this was business. This, right. this is not that place for that shit. So I was always focused and I was learning as I was going along there. But I, I found myself wanting to be in the studio more than on the corner. Yeah. And not because of the safety, because I didn't even think about that, because I was still strapping. You know, I, I was, we were all like cowboys for like, I, I don't know, maybe up until maybe 10 years ago, we stopped like, you know, cowboying it. But like, wow. we, we would, we, all of us, no matter who was with us. So when we were sitting at the rainbow? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Damn. There was at least five guns. Within always present I, I, I mean i would believe that there were plenty of guns oh, I had, around you i but. had one on my hip every time <laughs> you know i was a real cowboy in that sense you know um because old habits die hard yeah <laughs> you know what i mean it's called Stevo's hot sauce for your butthole and if you go on amazon and type in Stevo's hot sauce for your butthole and Order yourself a bottle. You'd be really helping me because right now we're ranked number 30 on all of Amazon. And if you buy a bottle, we might go up the ladder and that would mean a lot. So please get on Amazon and buy Stevo's hot sauce for your butthole. Yeah. Yeah, dude.